Hello everyone, today I'll introduce a few other basic MPI concepts, sending and receiving data. So I'll just copy what we had from last time and today we will make a ring program where one process sends data from itself to the next uh, process and so on and the last one will send it back to the first one. So. Additionally, I'll now make two more variables. So destination and a source location, basically, which uh, represents the ranks that we will need. And then uh, we have some secret data that is propagated to the next process. So just to indicate it's private, I called it secret here. Uh, that's not a convention or anything at all just that's the way i like uh, i like to write this example and then a temporary variable so let's say we have some uh, temporary variable which is just the rank plus 14 um, and And we want to send this to the next rank and the next rank is going to print this. So hello world, this is rank, um, rank blah, blah. Now what we're going to do is uh, so-called MPI receive. So we want to receive data and these MPI calls generally have a huge amount of our arguments. So Let's look at the, what the official standard says. So in last tutorial, I already explained that uh, on, the, on the website, you can find the whole uh, specification. And at this moment, this MPI 3.1 is the last version. They're working on another one uh, as we speak, but this is the last completed version. So let's go with that one. Um, and I've opened it here. So MPI receive. First, we must specify a buffer location. So that is where we want to receive it. And that is actually a variable secret. Um, then we have the data, uh, the count, the count. This is just one because we're only sending one integer. If it would be an array of, let's say six integers, then this would be a six. Then the data type, and that is MPI integer. Uh, you can find a whole list of these data types, MPI logical, complex, double precision, etc. It's also in the standard. I just opened another tab here. Um, right, then the source location source uh, that is where the rank where we're getting the data from the tag you can do a MPI uh, no wait sorry tag just do zero uh, for now we'll ignore tags and com that's MPI com world and then uh, I error I forgot something uh, you must also specify the status yeah, it's, it's good practice to store it in another variable, but now we'll just do MPI status ignore, just to speed things up a bit. And we must also do an MPI send. So send and what we're going to send is temp. This is again just one uh, unit of information, one element, so just one. MPI integer, uh, then we specify the destination instead of the source. So MPI send count destination tag. Um, right. So that uh, deals with it, but I haven't defined this uh, source and destination yet. So source, 
that is just uh, modulo rank minus one comma n box and the destination is um, the rank plus one because we send it to the next rank and we get it from the previous rank now in fortran there's mod and modulo there's a difference and if you use mod here uh, the source for the, the zeroth rank will be minus one and it uh, i don't know what will happen then but that's not really how i intended to design it so i'm using modulo let's see okay so actually i made a mistake on purpose now so see if you can find it i'm going to compile this now port um, ring it compiles fine oh everything's great but now when i run it let's do four rank not x hmm it's taken uh, quite a long time in fact it will take forever so let's interrupt this what went wrong um so we're sending data uh sorry we are receiving data before we have sent it so these are so-called blocking operations so they can only it can only progress past receive once it actually has received something and since nothing is being sent yet it cannot progress so it's deadlocked so this is another uh, type of error um, the, yeah it's a new type of error what we can do is simply swap this around um, right hey and it's working let's see if this actually matches our expected result so from uh, zero it receives from uh, rank three plus the 14 to get our secret is 17 and it, it seems it matches for the rest as well so this is working as intended but again there's a bit of uh, there, there's still a problem here because there are multiple ways, multiple types of sending data with MPI. And if you just specify MPI send, it will choose for you between a buffered send and a synchronous send. The buffered send, what it will do is it will copy the buffer. So, uh, the, so the temp variable here into some local buffer and then the routine returns and it can continue that's why this works but a synchronous send this actually waits for the receiving end to be ready to say okay i'm ready send me the data then it sends the data directly into the receive buffer so the secret variable and in fact we can specify that so uh, at, with s send and now we compile and we run again and it's deadlocked so i'm not saying that you should always specify s send or b send um, i'm just saying if you leave it up to mpi to choose you may think, okay, uh, it, it works fine on my machine. You send it to a friend of yours, he compiles it just fine. Then when he runs it, it's deadlocked. So this is just programmed in a bit of a dangerous way. Um, and you can see when I do a B send, so so-called buffer send. It works as predicted um, so in a minute I'll show you how you should have 
uh, designed this program. But first let me explain when you want to be using a buffered or synchronous send. So buffered, it's, uh, it's nice because it returns immediately after uh, the data has been safely stored away in a local buffer. This can be faster, but if you have huge amounts of data, it will fill up your uh, memory and that's, that's not very nice. So in that case, you may want to use a synchronous send. You can still let MPI choose for you, but this should be designed in a different way for safety. So we can do uh, if rank zero then um, So what I did here, if the rank is zero, then we send first and for all of the others we receive. So we wait, then we send. And this will avoid uh, a possible deadlock. I'm not saying it's programmed efficiently in this way, it's just to, to demonstrate an example here. You would, you would probably do it much differently. Um, forward. as you can see it works but just to to make sure let's test with s send uh, because that gave issue before oh wait um, and as you can see even that works So that's it for today, see you next time.